it's a modest country. Do not walk in in a bikini with a G-string. It's just not something you would do. Hi everyone, I'm Jimmy. And I'm Pauline. And we're from Mitch's on the Horizon. And today we're gonna to talk about the seven things that we wish we knew before we traveled to Malaysia. And the first thing we have on our list here, something that I personally don't like as well, and that's uh, public displays of affections are, are frowned upon. This is a predominantly Muslim country. It's a very moderate Muslim country. It's not like Saudi Arabia. The hijabs and the burqas are beautiful over here. And generally the Muslims here are quite Please. friendly and they, they, they're they very accommodating. They know that you're not Muslim and yeah. they don't try and force that upon you. So regardless of your beliefs about religion and in Muslim culture, it's very, it's frowned upon to show public displays of affection. And I've noticed this a few times that I've been walking. You really notice it. So you see people holding hands, like they say backpackers and they're holding hands. You go, mm. what are you doing? Like, it's really odd when the whole country is not holding hands and the whole country's not kissing in public. And then you see just like one person mm. doing it. Public display space of affection or not, it comes down to bringing bad attention on yourself. You don't need that bad of attention. It, it just creates a bad experience for the people that are watching and then creates a bad experience because you might get people that judge you and treat you differently at shops and things like that if you're holding hands. Okay. So, you know, you come to a country like Malaysia, like anywhere, you play by their rules. And if their rules are like me and Pauline can't hold hands, well, we're adults and we can wait eight weeks, 10 weeks to we're at another country. That's it's not the Do end of the world. Doors. Next thing we got on this list is, is planning around Malaysian and Singaporean school holidays. But sometimes also Australian school holidays as most tourist spots hike their prices on Australian school holidays because they know it's going to be busy. Uh, the main reason you want to watch out for Malaysian and Singapore holidays specifically is because mm -hmm. it really changes the trip that you're on. Yeah. So if you're coming over here on a holiday and you want to go do adventurous things and you want to go do this touristy stuff. Especially let's... like Splash Mania, um, Petro Sains, like the big theme park kind of stuff. Very busy and like busier than you, you would expect. People in Malaysia, people in Singapore only do these kinds of things on school oh, holidays. Nice. Yeah. And it makes a massive difference. Uh, outside of school holidays, you might get just an average number of people at a mm. theme park. When it's school holidays, it's an unbearably large number of people that yeah. attend places. Yeah. And ironically, these are the places as a tourist you want to go. So. But you definitely need to account for that. Because yep. the, their school holidays is anywhere from two weeks to four weeks. And it will make a massive difference to whether you enjoy your holiday or you don't. Because there's nothing worse than going to a place like Sunway Lagoon and waiting in line for an hour. Hours on end. When yeah. if you had gone a week and a half later, there would be no lines. Yeah. It really makes a big difference to your trip. Yeah. Malaysia is still a cash first country. You really need to plan ahead here in Malaysia around having cash on you because there's a lot of places in Malaysia. We're in the Cameron Highlands at the moment. It's a beautiful place, but no one takes cards. Everything's cash around here. So you need to plan around that. And that starts from when you actually leave the country of origin. So when you leave Australia, how are you going to get cash out here? That the banks that are here, are they going to work with the cards you have? Because we've had some experience with that. Correct. I actually had cash on hand, so the Malaysian ringgit on hand, and it only happened that we knew a friend um, of a friend that still had Malaysian ringgit and she wanted to on sell it. So we ended up with cash. Otherwise, I would have gone to a cash place and ordered in Malaysian ringgit because you can order in any currency before you leave. You can order in Singaporean, Malaysian, Indonesian, whatever you need, you can order it before you go. As long as you've got a week or two before you go, they can get it in for you and they can get it in whatever amount you need and then I would also make sure that you have a card that does not charge you transaction fees or a conversion rate fee because you are going to be stung every time you take money out they put a percentage on those transactions you also want to make sure that you let the bank know that you're going overseas too Correct. because this has <laughs> happened to us as well the banks called up and said oh we or like they've just cancelled our card yeah. or like locked our card because yeah. They thought we were having suspicious transactions Correct. when it was really just us. Yeah. And normally they'll ask you for a region that you're going to. So you just yeah. want to let them know those details so that you don't have any issues. You need to consider that. And you would think, okay, I'll just go to an ATM. Now the big thing is a lot of the places outside of the main cities don't have ATMs. Yeah. So we're in Cameron Highlands, which is quite a popular tourist area. So yeah. there's a few ATMs. But if you go to the towns between Cameron Highlands and here. Further north, like if you're going on to Taman Negara or one of the um, islands, further north you will find that because they are more rural 
you will not get that cash out, so you need to have it on hand before you go. Yep. And you won't be able to get stuff, so it's yep. really important that you carry cash on you, and you just don't know when you're gonna need it. We're gonna make a video about this specifically that happened to us, but yep. we had a very, very unique situation happen to us with the police here. We ended up having to bribe them. Yes. Um, and so we, if we didn't that's have cash on hand, yeah, that's issue. a whole other story, but <laughs> you never know when you're gonna need the cash, so you always wanna kind of take out more than you think you're gonna yep. need, because this leads on to the next point, and the next thing we wish we knew uh, before we traveled to Malaysia, and that is Malaysia is very safe. A lot safer than a lot of countries out there. So the reason I bring this up is because we packed things that we thought we would need, only to find out that there's no crime here, mm. very little crime. So like, it doesn't make sense to just carry that big heavy pack safe around to put our belongings in when we're at a, a tourist area, mm. when there's very little crime. Admittedly, there's crime everywhere, there's, there's crime, but Malaysia is the third safest besides Singapore and, yeah. and Tokyo. If you do go to a place, um, Splash Mania or Sunway Lagoon, and you're worried about your belongings, they always supply lockers, and yep. they are so safe because you've got to physically do it yourself. So you've got to go up to the machine. You've got to type in your phone number and a code and a color and all this kind of stuff to even get into your locker. So they're not like you just get handed a key and someone could have a copy of it. These are all automated systems. Don't be afraid to like explore in Malaysia. So some of the best experiences we've had have just been exploring. Yep. Nine o'clock at night, walking around. You're not going to run into gangs and crime and getting robbed. Like like in some other countries like Manila, um, it's a pretty scary place at night. Here in Malaysia, it's it's incredibly safe. You've got to use your common sense. We don't actively display any signs of wealth, like we don't have any rings on. I did or... not wear any kind of wedding rings, yep. earrings, jewelry, nothing. I didn't come with anything. So we don't attract that kind of attention either, but we have felt so safe here just walking around. People are going to stare at you because you're foreign, for lack I've, of a better term. I've had people that want selfies just with myself. So like Jimmy's saying, you can walk around, it's very safe. I would walk, well I always walk, to the shop by myself and I would always feel safe. And one day it was raining and I luckily had an umbrella so I popped my umbrella up just so I got out of the shop. These two guys came running over to me and said, can we walk with you because we don't want to get wet. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. So here I am, umbrella, guy on either side of me, handbag and shopping. And when I was about to go to our apartment and they're like, oh, we've just got to go on a bit further. I was like, okay. And he goes, can I have a selfie? And I was like, sure, why not? But like, I felt a little bit uncomfortable, but I knew that nothing was going to happen because there's always people around. Yeah. You just got to go with the flow. Mm. You know, like I think if you come to a country like Malaysia or any country in Southeast Asia and act like an idiot, you're going to attract that kind of attention. But if you just go with the flow and just go, keep a smile on your face and yep. just say hello to people, yeah, you're generally safe because Malaysians are just as susceptible to crime as you are. So if you go into an area and there's like no one around mm. and not even a single person walking around, then maybe it's not safe. Yeah. But like, the thing with Malaysia than say, uh, compared to say Australia, is that it'll be 11.30 at night and there's a family with two kids walking yeah. from the sh from having dinner back home. Yeah. You know, they wouldn't be doing that if the country wasn't safe. Mm. This is another thing that we noticed is like modesty. Oh yes, it's, Sunway Lagoon, yeah. that was a big one for me. That was an so, eye opener, yeah. Real eye opener. So as we said, it's a modest country. You will see them in a swimming pool with full coverage. They still look very pretty, like they've got all these swimming garments on and they're always they're always designed, they're always smiling, they're always happy. Do not walk in in a bikini with a G-string. Like yeah. that's just it's just not something you would do. And this is what I was saying about Malaysia being a very very understanding country and a very accommodating country. Mm. That's an eyelid if you're wearing yeah. a one piece or no. a guy's not wearing a, a shirt. We were at somewhere where Pauline's talking about, we we're at Sunlay Lagoon and yeah. there was it was there was a woman effectively wearing underwear. Made us uncomfortable and we're from Australia and mm. we see it all the time. We see it all Let the alone time. her her being the only person in the park that yeah. was dressed like that. Yeah. So again, don't draw unwanted attention to yourself. It's not it's not good attention. And like I said, if you come into someone else's country, you need to respect the laws of the land, yeah. whether you agree with them or not, or just don't come to the country. Yeah. Okay, so the next thing we have here is that while well, you can't drink the tap water, it's not potable from a drinking perspective, mm. you can brush your teeth with it and yes. you can shower with it and you can have it in small doses. It's not like a lot of other Southeast Asian countries. Like if you go to Vietnam, you, you cannot drink the not water full drink stop. The water there. Mm -mm. 
it will make you sick. Whereas here, like you, if you just get a mouthful of it, it's not going to kill you. The water here is, there's water treatment plants everywhere. The water's quite good. A lot of people or a lot of apartments and hotels also have the water filtration system hooked up to the taps, which does take, you know, a little bit of the stuff out, but obviously you wouldn't want to drink like a liter of it. You would just brush your teeth and do that kind of stuff. Yeah, we, where this came from is we spent a lot of money on water when we first got here, mm. brushing our teeth with it. Yeah. Um, cause I, cause we have been to- Or boiling till, the kettle and yeah. using it that way and having to wait for it to cool down. Like you wouldn't drink gallons and gallons of the water here, but like if you just get a mouthful, it's not going to kill yeah. you. We, we haven't really run into any ice that hasn't been brought in. Um, like they haven't been using the tap yeah. water, but- Majority of porkers markets, side stalls, all that kind of stuff that actually get their ice in. Like they yeah. actually have companies that physically deliver the ice and they've made it from filtered water. We have a general rule when it comes to ice. If it's got holes in it, it's good to go because yeah. if it's got holes in it, it's mass produced in a, in a factory. Yeah. Factory ice will always be produced with purified water. Yeah. So the next thing I've got here, and this is something that I stumbled upon through accident. Someone brought it up, brought it up to me. Malay and Malaysian are two different things. Now, it's something that you can get people around here get really funny about because Malay is an ethnic group of Malaysia and then Malaysians are the people of Malaysia. Now, the big thing about Malaysia and it's one of its biggest positives is that it's got a really diverse, there's Indians, Malays, Hi, Thais, man. Chinese, Filipinos. So the Malays are the majority ethnic group here in Malaysia and they're like people that are ethnically born in, in Malaysian, yep. but Chinese Malaysians, Indian Malaysians. Yep. So you just gotta be conscious of that. So I, where this came about is I used it in a video and I said Malays and then someone picked me up and said well not all all Malays are Malaysian but not all Malaysians are Malays. In Southeast Asia pride is a big thing and yeah. going on country and getting called XYZ when it's like actually no that's a different completely different yeah. type of person so just be conscious of that all Malays are Malaysians but not all Malaysians are Malays. <laughs> Good to know. Good so to know. the next thing I had here is that the cities of Malaysia and this goes for most of Southeast Asia are not designed for walking and not really designed for walking. Now there is exceptions to this. KLCC is really quite a walkable area of Kuala Lumpur but we're in the Cameron Highlands now and you know yeah there's footpaths but if if you're the curbs on the footpath are like this big oh the steps are this big like <laughs> if you're in a wheelchair or you have trouble walking prams with kids yeah prams with kids there. is a big one you know if you look at a lot of Malaysians the prams that they have are really light because most of the time they're carrying them like you can only walk a short distance before like you run into gravel or the the footpaths yeah. too uneven yeah. and you're gonna have to carry the kid in the pram anyway so just yeah. need to be conscious with that also so if you struggle to walk or you have a disability, you need to really consider where you're going to stay and how you're going to get around as bad yep. as that is. Can't Even today when we went to have lunch and we're walking along their footpath between the shops and there was a difference in shops, um, a mass massive change in height and then their steps are just so skinny and so tall and it's just, it was not, it was not safe. Even for the kids. Either buy a pram over here, just a cheap pram. Buy a cheap pram while you're over here and then just or leave it here. be prepared to wear your baby. Yeah, yeah, get a baby carrier and wear your baby. The backpack ones or the front ones. When we were staying in Ippo, our hotel was 800 meters away. So we got a grab um, yeah. and I'm glad we did because I was like, oh, we, Pauline was like, oh, we could probably carry the bags there. I was like, oh, no, I don't think we'll so. probably end up breaking one of them yeah. in a hole or something. Exactly. Yeah. I was like, we would never have got our bags down here. So you need to be realistic and go, okay, well, the seven ringgit or the 10 ringgit that's yeah. going to cost me to take this stuff, yeah. just pay it. So yeah. um, wish we kind of knew that before traveling here because we may have carried, we may have maybe changed our bags slightly. Mm. It's going to make a big difference. Guys, do you agree with our list? Do you think there's anything that we missed that really we should have spoken about that could help others better plan their trips to Malaysia? Because it's a great country and it's a fantastic place to visit, yeah. but you really do need to know these things before you get here. So if there's anything you can think that could help others out, leave it in the comments below. And also if you have any suggestions or tips on where we should go next as a family, um, leave them in the comments too. We love to know where the best places to go and where, the, where we can have fun and, and have adventures. So yeah. guys, as always, Jimmy and I'm Pauline and we'll catch you all on, on the, the horizon. horizon.